Okay. Hey, y'all. I've been waiting a long time to finally put together a video and show you what I've been working on for the past year and a half, two years or so. Um, maybe not even. I honestly can't remember. I gotta look back at my files and see when the first flowfish was found in my painting. Um, but it's been a little bit. I was trying to, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. If you've seen my other art, which I'll show you at some point, um, it's pretty detailed. And uh, that's kind of how I've been about a lot of things in my life. It's, uh, I want it to be done right. And uh, my dad always taught me, if you're gonna do something, do it right the first time. So I've been totally putting off making a video, wanting everything to be perfect and wanting my studio to be perfect. And my studio is a moldy mess right now. So instead of just waiting for everything to be right, I'm just gonna go ahead and freaking do the thing. As far as my first video, kind of introducing you to uh, Flowfish, which is the, um, I guess you could call it the body of work that I've been working on. Um, here's one of them. This is one of the ones I just got back from the printmaker. They are all made with liquid acrylic paint. Kind of got into the fluid painting and the pour painting when I got really frustrated with my realism. Um, just wasn't selling like I hoped and it also wasn't that much fun to make anymore. It felt more tedious than fun. So I, uh, <laughs> I did a commission for my grandmother and I've never had this happen before, but it finally happened where she just did not like it at all. Uh, totally sent it back. She's like, it doesn't even look like my dog. Uh, I beg to differ, but at the same time, the main thing was she didn't like the original picture that I worked from. So it caught me off guard. I've never had any uh, customers pretty much be unhappy with what I've created for them. So it was, it was really funny for me that it finally happened after years and years and my first instinct was, you know what? Screw this, I'm done. <laughs> um, little bit of a hissy fit temper tantrum moment, but uh, at the same time, it was very clear to me. Uh, I'm kinda, I was feeling really kinda done with the realism focused art as a career path. It wasn't really fulfilling me in the way that I was hoping it would. Even though technically I was successful, I met the goals that I set and uh, sold plenty of paintings, was featured in galleries, um, one in particular in Charleston. Um, I did well, but I wasn't thriving in all the ways that I was really hoping for. So instead of beating my head against the proverbial door, I just decided to walk away from it and try something new. And I hung out with one of my dear friends, Catherine, and she's one of the most incredible artists I know. So I went over to hang out with her and we decided to just play around with the liquid acrylic pore painting craze that seems to have just taken over Instagram and uh, really kind of allows a lot of people who aren't professionally trained artists to create really beautiful works of art. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to see what all the buzz was about. So, did that, had a lot of fun, and that was very refreshing for me to finally have some fun painting instead of it feeling like work. So, I decided to do some more of it, and in the midst of just playing around, I found one of the blobs that I was experimenting with and moving around started to kind of look like a fish. And that just sparked in me the idea to paint with a brush uh, a fish face on it. And that's pretty much it. That's how flow fish were born. Just kind of popped out of the void and the polymorphous perversity of my mind just saw a fish there. And I used some of the skills that I had from realism to just 
tweak it just enough that it looked a little more fishy. And when I did that, it really surprised me how cool it came out to me. And a lot of my friends really liked it too. One of my friends immediately was just like, I need to have that, how much is it? And uh, I sold it to him, to my buddy Will. Hey Will, you're the man. Um, so he has the first official flow fish. And since then, I think I just looked at my files. I think I'm up to 49, no, sorry, 39 that are captured. I've created more than 39, but out of every set of fish, I tend to choose the ones that I like the most. And I'll take those to my printmakers and have them capture them so I can have them reprinted and available to everybody after that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now. It's I'm looking at this set. This is one of the first and only sets. I've been very busy, uh, not on art, from 2019. And uh, yeah, let's see, I showed you that one. Here's another one. This one looks a little bit more like a catfish. I'm hoping you can see it. I have no idea. I'm just winging it right now with this whole video thing. I'm going to learn how to play with this a little more. I got a video editing program, so I'll probably add some stuff in later. Um, and I'm going to get real funky with all this. And uh, the real the point is I want to teach you, all of you, how to do this. And I'll eventually teach you all how to paint realistically like I do and like other people do. But for now, this is what I'm gonna teach you because this is what brings me joy. And I want you all to be able to experience the joy that I feel when I create one of these. Because it's, it's really, they're, they're super special to me because they're incredibly unique and one of a kind. Um, <laughs> doing the types of painting that I was doing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this, we'll see what happens here. Okay, there is, this is one of my realism pieces. That's the original, I like to keep this one above my bed. Um, it's super photographic because I work from photographs and try to replicate those things that I see. It's a coyote I did. Everyone likes to think it's a wolf. It's not a wolf, it's a coyote. So that's what I used to do. And it bored the hell out of me, really. After a while, it was fun for a bit. Um, I totally lost track of what I was saying. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to pause it. In theory, I'm gonna pause it. I'll probably edit this out. Maybe not. What was I saying? I was talking about the realism. And I was talking about the fish. I don't know. Scrap all of that. I'm gonna come back. Okay, so catfish. I don't know, man. <laughs> I also have ADHD. If you just witnessed all of that, this is how my brain works. Funny for y'all, probably. It might be frustrating for some people. I know it's definitely frustrating to people who have been uh, friends and in relationship with me, but guess what? It's most frustrating for me having to live with it every single day. But uh, I've come to get, got, blah, 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 I've gotten used to it, and it is what it is. You know, it definitely holds me back in some areas, but it also ends up being a superpower in some areas, like being able to hyper focus on. A realism painting for however many hours it takes to create it. I can't tell you how many hours it takes to create it in reality because I have no concept of time. There's now and there's not now. So I kind of go into a zone, I don't know what happened, and then I step away from the painting and it's like, holy shit, that's all there. Cool. That's convenient. Um, that's just how it goes. So you're just gonna go with me. You're gonna roll with me. This is how it is. Um, yeah, I started focusing on these because I realized I could kind of create a body of work with them. And, uh, oh, now I remember, ha, they're one of a kind. So, <laughs> with my realism paintings, I just sit there and will keep painting 
until it looks right to me, comparing it to the reference piece that I have and the composite that I create for the painting I want to do and looking at the painting and looking back and does it look right? If it doesn't, keep painting. If it does, stop. It's that simple. It's really not that complicated. There's nuanced aspects, of course, and there's skills and stuff to learn, but the main gist of it is, like Dory says, adjusted. Just keep painting. If it doesn't look right, keep painting. If it just still doesn't look right, paint over it. Paint it again. Whatever. That's what a painting is. All of them. <laughs> Except these. Um, so the aspect being, if someone really wanted to, they can replicate those paintings I just showed you. They just have to sit there and stroke for stroke recreate it. And they may not, it may not be exact, but over history there's been plenty of people who professionally, um, pla not plagiarize, what's the word I'm looking for? You know what I'm looking for, copy paintings. Um, these, you can't. I've tried, and I think it's going to be a very interesting offshoot of Flowfish, seeing where they go, of people who try to create two that look the same. Um, I don't think that's ever actually going to be able to fully and completely happen because there's a chaos effect in it, or a chaos dynamic. It's a nice sounding group of words, right? Chaos dynamic. Um, in the mixing of the paint, I'm hoping you can see this. If not, sorry. But the whole thing is, the coolest parts of each fish, in my opinion, are these color blends and these cells that form. And those happen as a result of the mixing colors, the mixing paint, and the silicone that's added to the paint to create those cells. And that just happens. That's just like a bloop, you smear. I'll drip these colors in and then smear the fish. And then whatever happens next is up to chaos. That's kind of the fun of it. You never really know how it's going to turn out until it dries. Um, I'll do my smear and I'll, I'll tweak the fish a little bit to make it a little bit more of a fish. But in reality, in this particular style, the less that I do, the better it comes out, in my opinion. So... It's been quite the opposite of what I've been doing as a career for almost a decade as far as making it perfect. This, I just kind of hope in a prayer. We'll see what happens. And uh, every once in a while, you end up with something. Here's one of my favorite ones from this last set, like this one. Came out with really cool cyan underneath this blue, and it had a great turn to it. The fins came out pretty cool. Um, it didn't run off the canvas, which often happens. These things kind of end up looking squished. I'm still working on <laughs> getting them centered well in uh, on these panels that I get. Where did I get them from? Jerry's Artorama. I don't know if I can like tout them or anything, but that's where I got it from. Great prices and. Um, these don't have the texture that you have on canvas. Now I have one on canvas here too, as a little comparison. You probably can't see the detail of it in this particular video, but you can see the canvas texture on this. Doesn't ruin it, doesn't take away from it too much, but with these, I make them small because I kind of have to. This is one of the larger fish. Get all that dog hair off of there um, that I've done. And the really cool bubble effects, I don't know if this term is correct for what I'm trying to describe, but they're scalar in that they're, they're scale specific. Um, they only kind of happen small like this currently. I've seen some artists on Instagram and elsewhere that have been able to create really large cells, but they don't like to share their secrets. It's totally their secret to share or not share. I personally am going to share all my secrets because I think everybody should be able to advance art together, but 
until I find out from those people what the hell they're doing, I'm going to keep them small because uh, I'm kind of constrained in that way. Uh, it is what it is. However, once I get these shot for prints, my printmakers are incredible and are able to capture very, very minute details. And when these small fish are blown up to like a three foot by four foot size, they look really cool. And you can see a huge amount of detail in everything. And I really like that. I like how that comes out. And all that really cool detail that comes out is stuff I don't do. I don't have any control over any of that. It's just the dynamic of the fluid paint doing its thing. So it's this kind of dance with chaos that ends up serendipitously awesome a lot of times. Um, once I create them, I'll take them to the printmaker to get shot. And then afterwards, I'll coat them in resin which is kind of the running trend. This one you can see is a little bit shiny from all that resin. It definitely keeps it nice and solid. Um, it makes the whole painting look really wet, which brings out the vibrancy in the colors. And I like to use a lot of really high contrast colors, at least in these sets I have. Um, and I also use, I'm hoping you can see it, maybe I'm gonna try and rotate it a little so you can. I use, Iridescent paints, glitter paints, um, neon paint, all kinds of stuff, really, just to kind of get the coolest effects out of it. And when you put the resin on it, it really makes all that glitter and all the uh, iridescent paint shine, sparkle, look awesome. So that's why I like to do that. It's also a huge, ah, moment. <laughs> because you can only do it really once, as far as I know right now, and uh, you can very easily screw it up. And you only get one shot on these one originals. Can't make it again after. I lost one of my favorite originals resining it uh, not that long ago, where <laughs> I was trying to close it, I closed it inside of a cardboard box because when it's, when the resin is curing, a lot of times dust can fall into it. I had a bug fly into one of them, which I'll tell you about later. That was actually really cool. But overall, I wanna keep dust off of it. So what I tried doing was just utilizing what I had nearby, which was a box, uh, a thin box that I had used for shipping and uh, put them in there and closed it. Well, <laughs> the piece that I was working on was a little too thick, a little thicker than I was expecting. And the box top, landed on it and then cured on it. So when I opened it, it was stuck to the top and when I pulled it off, it just tore the piece in half. That's what happens sometimes, you know, shit happens. <laughs> and you lose one of your favorite pieces. It was uh, definitely a lesson in impermanence and also making sure I develop a really good system for putting resin on my finals and doing it in a really super safe way. Anyway. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. And so I now have 39 flow fish logged. And I will have all of them available on my website, ryanosullivanart.com. You can buy paper. You can buy canvas prints. We can do custom size and we can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, that's where you can pretty much get it or you can order an original from me. Um, but that's also where you can see all my flow fish currently. The ones that I've already done. Now that I'm doing this whole thing, I'm going to start recording my process and explaining it and teaching you how to do the exact same thing I'm doing. I'm really excited to see what kind of stuff comes out from all of you. I've messed around with it and the only things I've really created are fish and a couple serpents. Some dragony kind of stuff. But the sky's the limit. Your imagination is the limit on this. And I implore you, please, think outside the box. Really let whatever comes out of you come out of you and then share it with the world because it's, it's important. The one thing you do 
could inspire someone else to do something similar or something slightly different. And that keeps going down the line and it helps all of us to expand our creative potential. I personally <laughs> believe all human awareness and consciousness is kind of all part of the same thing. And in that way, I created these. They're, they're, they're mine in a way, but they also belong to everybody. They're, they're not, I haven't seen anyone else online doing it. That doesn't mean someone isn't doing it already. Um, and it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be the first person to do something. You don't have to be the best person to do something. You just gotta do it your way. And sometimes your way is going to have that little thing that makes it super, super special. And that's all that matters. And even if it's not, doesn't matter. What really matters is just how you feel doing it after you do it, what, whatever it is. It could bring up grief, it could bring up joy, it could bring up whatever it is. That's what it's about, I think. Uh, I, take it from me, I went off and, and tried to do the art thing and be a professional artist and make my career from this and do all that kind of stuff. It sucked, it sucked, y'all. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it at all. I mean, there were some times like, yeah, cool, I sold a painting, great. But it just didn't do it for me. And it's, I think, because it was coming from a deeper place of really desiring acceptance through it and hoping that this talent that I had would make everybody accept me. Because he's like, oh, he's a great artist. He's done this. He's done that. He's cool now. Whatever. None of that shit really matters. <laughs> what really matters is how I feel about myself. And um, when I let go of all of that stuff, it allowed me to find something that really makes me happy when I do it. And it makes me happy to look at these things. Not necessarily the same with a lot of my other art. So if there's anything I can teach just from the path that I've taken... Just have fun. Focus on that. I think everything else will fall into place after that. Um, yeah, so let's have fun together, <laughs> shall we? I'm going to show you how I do this so that you can do this too. The best part I think about all of this is it's actually really cheap. All the paints I use are the 50 cent to a dollar a, a thingy for it, it's not the super expensive stuff. And you can get everything you need to start doing this for under a hundred bucks. So it's pretty accessible to everyone. And I'm hoping we can build ourselves a really nice big community around this and see what kind of amazing things come out of all of y'all. Um, and then y'all are gonna, whatever you do is totally going to inspire me to try some new stuff too. And you're probably gonna find new techniques in the process, especially if you think outside the box, get a little crazy. You know, Bob Ross was the one who said, there, what, what are there? there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's so true. Don't worry about mistakes, just freaking do it, man. Or woman, whoever's doing it or everything in between, just do it. Just have some fun with it. Let go of needing it to be whatever, as much as you can, and just try and have fun. See what happens. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm having fun just doing this video, letting go of my need for it to be perfect. I may not even edit it so that y'all can see I just totally blooped a billion times. Maybe not a billion, but at least three. And yeah, we're gonna do this together. You and me. We're gonna make big things. They're gonna be beautiful and they're gonna be fun. That's the goal. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna end this video. I've got this cool magic button. Watch this. I'm gonna make it stop. Ready? One, two. Did it work? Ah, it didn't work. Now I'm gonna stop it.